Parents, I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We have a really cool guest, Kathy Jones, and she is all things that have to do with college planning. And I know that those waters can be really crazy to navigate and very overwhelming for you and also for your teenager. So really what she's going to do is she's going to tell us how college planning can be made simple which in today's time, we're so busy and all the things going on, it's so important to find something that's important that can also be translated into something that's simple. So I'm really excited to have her here and have her go through all of this. Remember that in our Facebook group, I wanna make sure that you join that. You can ask her questions and we'll make sure that, that you get the answers that you need or the information or resources that you need. All the stuff that we talk about today is going to be linked to her, so you can be able to contact her. You can get her freebie that she offers to you today, and any other resources that she references. They're all going to be there, so don't feel like you have to scramble and write things down right now. You can go ahead and be in the Facebook group and get all of that information. So I'm excited to have Kathy Jones here. She is with Class 101. Again, she's all things college prep. I know if you're not thinking about it now or in the middle of it, that you need to start thinking about this. So Kathy, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank you, thank you for having me. So I am curious why you want to be with, with us today. What makes you so passionate? You and I have kind of shared what this is, but if you'll share with the parents, what makes you so passionate about being in this group of parents wanting their teenagers to be successful? Well, yes, um, I'm a mother of two boys um, and my oldest is a senior uh, oh. this year. So I, I feel it. I, I feel how overwhelming it can be. Um, and this is my profession. And so as a parent, I'm getting bombarded with so much information. Um, my teenage son gets hundreds of emails from different colleges and just the information overload makes it very confusing. Um, what information is accurate? Um, more importantly, what information is um, applicable uh, to your child? Because um, every student is different um, and has different goals. Um, and so that's why I really like this. My son is introverted. Um, he's not going to go step up and you know, speak up and self-advocate for himself when it comes with a college admissions person is at his lunch counter. He's not going to go up there. Um, but if I get him one-on-one -on -one and ask some probing questions, he does have hopes and dreams and fears. Um, so that's what I really like about this because uh, for parents, you're trying to do what's best for your child. Um, and sometimes that child shuts down because they, they just don't know. Um, they don't know where to start for that first step. They, they absolutely don't know where to start, a lot of them, and, and it's intimidating for them to feel like, because very few of them, because as a life coach for teens, you know, we work on aspects of this too, just future, like, what do you want to do? What do you want to be in your grow up? They always laugh, but that's the best way to ask that question, I think. And so they feel pressured either uh, from their peers and what their peers are doing, or from their parents, or just innately within themselves, like, oh my gosh, I have to pick what I want to do with the rest of my life. And that pressure on top of how am I going to make that work? What college to choose? Uh, you know, what, what exams do I have to take to get into college? Oh, I'm not a good writer. I need help with my essays. All that can be overwhelming. So what I see that you do is that you break it all down beautifully so so the parents and the teenagers can navigate. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. That's exactly what we do. Break it up into, um, we're proactive with this, so we don't have the panic at the end. Um, and we're proactive so that they have all the information um, so that then they don't, they have choices at the end of it. Um, mm. So if we take the right steps, then they have choices. Um, it's not just, oh, this is the only college I applied to and got in. Um, we really were thoughtful about it. Um, and yes, those little baby steps, the action items, like what do I just need to do this semester that's going to help me in the long run? Um, then we'll worry about the next step when it arrives, right? <laughs> so. Right, right. And, and as, as the person that is helping and serving them, uh, you're probably the same as me where you say, you know what, just let me don't be the person to stress out about that. You know, let me carry that load for you. And like, they're like, oh, thank goodness. You know, so like, 
you'll have some work to do, but just, you know what, just let me be the one that worries about that. And that seems to take the pressure off of them. So why is college preparation, why is it actually important to have the preparation? So I believe it's important to have the preparation because one, it, the cost of college is enormous. Yeah. Um, so this is a very huge financial investment. Um, so it's really important that you, if you have those goals, you take the steps necessary um, to get into the college that you want um, and at the most affordable price. Um, so that's one of the biggest things. Um, but also, again, just with social media, with you, you mentioned the comparisons of students yeah. and, oh, yeah. and like that. Um, I think it's very important to these students to have that time set aside where they can stop, talk about themselves in the future, right? What is that going to look like? And what is important to them specifically? Um, I tell my students all the time, like, don't look left and right, look straight ahead. Um, because what's the right goal for you um, and the right school for you um, may not be what the person to the left and right is doing. Um, so yes, I think it's really important for these students these days because I mean, you see it all the time with the anxiety um, yeah. to have some a mentor to sit down with them and say, hey, we're, we're doing the right things. Um, we're setting some goals. Um, and for the parents as well. Um, I, again, I have a teenager. <laughs> so um, it is, it is, not untrue. It is not a sales tactic. When I tell people it's hard to college plan your own child, um, because I can tell a student something that I know that their parent has told them a hundred times before, right. but when I say it always. It's brilliant. It's it's like, brilliant. <laughs> like that was the yeah. first time they'd ever heard that. It's yeah. just like, and, and and we laugh about it, but sometimes the parents are like, "I've told them that." I'm like, "That's yeah. just how it is, right?" When you're a parent, you understand that's just how it is. Yeah, and I've had parents say like that in itself was worth it to preserve that relationship with the child um, where I know that they're going to go talk about it with you. And if there's any missteps, I, you know, the, the parent will know, but um, that that student also what I love is that we teach um, through class 101 some soft skills as well. Oh. Like the students um, either Zoom or come in person to our offices and they speak to an adult. And we, uh, our motto here is that we empower, serve, and inspire. Oh. Um, so we empower these students to self-advocate. And so I tell them, like, I'm not your teacher. I'm a consultant. And so I want you to speak up. I want you to speak up on what you don't like and what you do like. And let's email admissions. They want to hear from you. Um, right. And so, and then it becomes a, let's teach you how to write an email. <laughs> then it becomes... Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You might interview, let's yeah. practice, let's yeah. role play a college interview, or um, if they're building up their resume, let's role play what a job interview as a high schooler would look like. Um, so we have all these added value ads that come in just um, from students, you know, getting those meeting times and interacting with, with another adult. Um, so I, I, I love that part of it. It's so important because they don't. They don't. There's a lot, there's a lot of teenagers that don't know how to have a conversation like you and I are having, right? which is just to me, just the most basic form of human communication, right. but they don't know how to do that. And if they're not, if they're not doing that with their friends or whatever, and then all of a sudden, because this is a huge financial commitment and, um, you know, it's determining at least where they're starting after they graduate from high school, maybe not, not where they're going to end up, but where they're starting that they have got to have that. So I love that you incorporate that into the foundational, aspect of what college planning is and college preparation. So if you could just get the parents just like a bullet list of, you know, what is it? Picking a college, you know, what can you do just like the bullet points of like, what is college preparation? What are like the basic elements of that? Right. So the way it looks at class one on one is we have 12 services. Um so students join um some even as early as the end of eighth grade, but you know, it could be freshman, sophomore, junior year. Um, so it's a different package and it encompasses 12 things. So we, every time a student sees me, we're not tutors, but we do hold them accountable for their grades. So they've set goals for their grades. So I say, hey, pull, pull, they're all online now, right? So I'm like, pull it up, let's look at those grades and yeah. what do we need to do to get them up? Study skills, so we do great accountability. Uh, we help them figure out the SAT or ACT and, and test prep them. And a good score, uh, my favorite answer in college planning is it depends, right? What's a good score? I'm like, it depends what's your college list, right? Um, but then we do aptitude and interest tests um, for their personality to see 
um, where they might want to major. Um, and so then we do some major exploration and what do those careers look like and is their job growth there? So we just, you know, carve out an hour that we meet with them periodically to do these things. Then yes, we form that college list and they have an online platform that they work through and they can pull up a college and see the stats so we can set goals based on that college. It was like, great, that's a great college. It has all these great factors that we've interviewed you that you're looking for. And kids don't know what study abroad is. And it sparks these great conversations. What do you mean research as an undergrad? And what is an undergrad? What is a minor? Um, so we identify, um, you know, what they don't know. Um, and so it just to be great, these great conversations. Um, and then we do test prep them as well. Um, and then we bring it all together as they lead into senior year and we meet with the parents and they sign off on the college list. And then I call it project management mode where it's, you know, what applications need to get done, how many essays do we need to write, um, and just making sure all the boxes are checked. Um, we also, through our services, help the parents through the financial aid. Um, uh -huh. We help them with those forms. So when do you fill out the FAFSA? Which schools require the CSS profile? And so again, it's all tailored to that student and their goals, and what are the next steps that need to, to get done? Um, and then of course, those outside scholarships. So we give them a strategy, um, what are you looking for? Um, how do you approach that? What's your goal? Again, a lot of it is just, as you would know too, it's getting organized, right? It's, okay, how many scholarships do I wanna apply for? When am I gonna do this? Is it on my calendar? Have I time blocked or time management yes. um, for a student? <laughs> um, yeah, so all of it together is what we help the families with as we walk through the through the high school years looking towards the future and and we try to have some fun and spark some inspiration along the way <laughs> yeah you want it you want them to be excited about that because really it's all about them right right yeah, yeah. Hey, it's all about you i'm on your team we're going to work through this together there's accountability to yourself accountability to me and then there's accountability to the parents. There's a lot of things. So I want to touch on one thing that, that just uh, just brought to my mind is that there are, um, let me say about this delicately. <laughs> I, I've worked with teenagers a long time and I've done a lot of things kind of sim similar to what you do, not to the extent of what you do, but I know that there, that the, the high school counselor their job description is not the same now as it was when I was in high school. And this is what they're telling me. And this is what I see. It's a lot of like class scheduling, maybe some testing for certain things. Um, but it's not what you do. It used to be a lot of what you do now. And it's not, there's some aspects to it, but most of the, the, the people that I work with, I just say, just go to them and get your transcript. <laughs> yeah, that's a start because that's something that, that they can't do on their own, you know? And so you, do you find that, that there's, um, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful to the counselors because I know they have, they're bombarded with a lot of other things that have just been put on their plate, but that they can't spend that one-on-one -on -one time with of doing all the things that, that you know how to do and you can help them with, there's just not that time, especially when you have these big public high schools and there's, you know, 1,000, 600, 800 in a class. How could you ever see that many people and have that kind of an intention? intention? Right. Yeah, we do see that. I mean, some schools, um, at least in the area, I'm in the greater Houston area, um, that we see they do, are they're lucky enough to have a college and career counselor. Um, um, to focus. But again, it's the... Um, like you said, they just don't have the time to, to put forth. So I like, to me, I give the analogy that you can have a great math teacher, but it doesn't mean a student might not need to still hire a math tutor yes. or yeah. they might be on the baseball team and hire a private you know, coach to help with something. Um, so yes, there are great resources, but again, just some students are either, um, you know, kind of higher anxiety or um, they just need a little bit more focus. Some just need to be held more accountable. Um, there and, you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so it, I mean, my son's one of them, like he, like he needs to, if I tell him, Hey, here's all the resources, go schedule the time on your own. It, it may not happen, but if it's, um, and again, I have my student, they schedule with me, they're responsible for scheduling the appointments and then they show up and, 
Um, so again, it's kind of teaching them that ac the accountability of I, I need to show up to the meeting and I had a to-do list in between the meeting and did I do those things? Um, so yes, I do, I do think um, the counselors just are a little bit, you know, they're just over, overworked. Um, and right. so this is just for, we're for certain, certain students that, that could really benefit from, from the extra help. Um, and, and we, we do, we think it's fun. You're right. I, I'm just these kids, cheerleader and mentor. Uh, half of them think I'm crazy. I get so, I had one young lady who on her practice test, she got a 1560 on the, out of 1600 for the SAT. And I called her um, and I called her and she picked up the phone. And she said, hello. And I was like, yes, this is me uh, calling. Like people do this. They call people on the <laughs> telephone. I'm glad you picked up. I was like, but this was too big. This is bigger than a text message. Like yeah, this yeah, is for yeah. big players. <laughs> so she thought that was, she was like, okay. Like, and I was, and I'm jumping up and down. And <laughs> Alex, I'm like, you've been working hard. It's great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. So, yeah. so it is funny. It is funny. Cause I've done that before. It's just called, called my clients and they're like, Wow, we're on the phone. This isn't a <laughs> yes. email from you. The really cool thing is when they call you, right? And yeah. I did. I had just the other weekend. I had one of my students. Um, he texted me first and said, "Can I call you real quick to tell you about something?" He was doing some research on something for himself, which was really cool. And I said, "Sure." So he called me, and it was so nice to see that progression in him from when he started like you see you see that with kids they come in very anxious probably overwhelmed and the parents too and then you just see that process where they're they are empowered and they're confident and they're happier and they're excited and they're hopeful that's a wonderful thing to right. experience right oh i agree i agree that's so what do parents so what's kind of the typical parent the, the, the scenario, can you give us an example, like a real life example of like, this is the kind of parent that comes in, how they're feeling, what they're going through, their student and, and showing us like how that process works and what the end result is. Yeah, I mean, of, of course we get different types of students, um, but one of my favorite ones from, you know, about a year or so ago was um, a young lady and so her parents came in and she's amazing at theater and so they were just really concerned about, you know, this whole GPA thing and how many honors classes, but this was really important to her. So should she take all these APs? So we got to sat, sit down because they want what's best for their child. Um, and they weren't sure what to do with this. And so we got to have this discussion where it became their choice of theater is important. And therefore I was able, let's look at these schools that she could get into. So, I mean, maybe you know, if she can't take all these AP classes, we're maybe not looking at Ivy League, but that's not her goal anyway. So right. we can let go of that. We can let go of that expectation that she needs to have certain things. She also had a lot of testing anxiety. So um, we were like, okay, we're going to prep her for this test. We're going to prep once. We're going to take it um, and we're going to see, and then we're going to add some schools that are test optional, which is a big thing right now with COVID-19 and all okay. the, the oh, testing. Test, op test optional, meaning the ACT and SAT. Yeah, so, so some schools are test optional, meaning that um, they do not require a standardized test for admission. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so uh, uh, most schools right now are due to the, the pandemic um, okay. are needing to go test optional. But then one thing that we add with this expertise at Class 101 is that we know, hey, we gotta read the fine print. Um, because just because it's test optional, we gotta make sure that we're not out of the running for any merit scholarships if that's important to you. And so again, all these buzzwords were going around and so this family was like, we don't even know what early decision versus early action means. And, and again, so much information. And I'm like, that doesn't apply to you. Um, we can go test optional and because you saved, you know, this doesn't apply to you um, as far as, so we could really speak to them specifically. So my favorite thing about this young lady is that she was amazing in her theater productions. I got to go um, to all of, it was great. Um, she got into the school that she wanted to, majoring in what she wanted to, um, but she told me what she loved is that when she was at theater practice and all the buzz of all the kids were talking, she was like, I didn't have to worry about it, Miss Kathy, because I knew we had an appointment and I knew if I just came in and like I stayed on the schedule you told me, I would be fine. So she could let go of it in between. Wow. Um, and, and it all, you know, worked out and now, you know, she's, she's in school and um, it doesn't look what she thought it would look like her, you know, right now. But um, yeah. 
Yeah. But she's there. So it just was, um, let's talk about with my, with the parents, we find it's what, let's talk about your kid, um, what they want to do, what your budget is, um, what the parameters are for school. And we, we can take that burden off and, and make you feel good about it. Um, so that, that's typically what we see. And then they just like it that these parents can, you know, email or text, what does this mean? What is this? Do we need to do that? And um, just that they have that person that they can ask to verify information um, for anything related to college. Right. right. Can, can you speak to something? And this is something I'll say of uh, parents that, you know, in coaching, we like to, we ask the questions that nobody else wants to do or will do. And so we like to stretch. So I want to throw this question out at the parents and see what your take on it is, is that, uh, there are students that want to do something professionally and the parents said, no, you're going to do this, you know, I, and, or we want you to do this or no, that's a terrible idea. And never to usurp the, um, the, the authority of the parents or anything. And I'm always very clear about that, but I know people whose parents have forced them into a major. It is not what they wanted to do. They're miserable. They end up not doing well in school and then usually end up having to change their major or they get out and they decide this is not what I want to do with my life. So that's, that's not easy for a parent to hear. And I think we've all had these expectations of, Oh, we what, what we want our kids to do when they grow up because they're so talented in this, or these are skill sets, but something clicks within them that they go, I think this is what I want to do. So I know you have, I love those assessment tests and the skills and the personality and all that. So I know that you, that you do that as well. So have you ever had a situation where it's like an aha moment for the student where they go, Oh my goodness, I didn't, I didn't know that's what they called this, this thing that I want to do. That's right. fun. That's fun in and of itself. Like I didn't know there was like really a job where I could put in all these different elements that I love and people get paid for that. And then you've had the parent go, no, she can't do theater. There's no money in it. They can't do that. And you have to balance the realism and also the, you know, the cost or whatever. But have you had situations like that? Yeah. I mean, I guess I've been pretty fortunate that not, not something that black and white. Um, and so what's really interesting is that we kind of rely on like the data, I guess you could say. Yeah. So, yeah. so when we, we do the personality assessment. Then we say, this is what your strengths are. You're naturally built like this, right? Yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. And so if you're naturally built like that, success comes a little bit easier. Absolutely. Because, right? Yeah. Then we do the interest. I'm like, this is what you love. So if you love that, then the passion is there. Guess what passion means? Motivation, which then leads to success. And so then I always put this little third leg on the stool where I say, then do you mind if we go to like the US, you know, labor bureau statistics and see, you know, the third is, does it put food on the table? Yes. Um, would be nice. And I'm like, and that third one's for mom and dad, like, cause right. they would like to make sure that you can yes. support yourself. Yes. And so we, we take a look at, can we find that perfect? And again, we're just maybe not trying to have the end career in mind, but you know, right. if we look at this career that, oh man, biology, that is fitting your passion. It's fitting who you are, you know, personality wise. And then let's look at several careers with that. And Hey, some of those will make mom and dad happy. So like we can do that. Um, so we, we do, we do it that, that way. And so it's, we're looking at the, the data, if you will, um, right. of, of what, but, um, I have been lucky enough that I haven't had a parent go, Oh, heck no. Like, <laughs> like they are just not doing that. Um, but, um, Yes, that would, those tough conversations do sometimes happen, especially with the school choice. Um, ah, yes. What's the right fit um, for, for the student? Um, and so again, it's, we do kind of an interview on those college factors. And so then we can say to the parent, like, these are the things that the student is looking for. Um, and this is why this school fits that. Maybe it's not the big school that's rah rah, or maybe it's not the same colors that you wore, right? But, um, but this is why, um, this one fits. Um, and usually they can come around because most parents, they, most parents, they want, they want their kid they to be want, happy. They want their kid to be happy. Absolutely. Yeah. They, do. they may not, they may not like what they hear at first, but they do want them to be happy. And they see that their kid is very enthusiastic, you know, about that. So, um, yeah, I was just curious, curious about that. So I'm glad to hear that, that, um, 
and I think some of it was more really almost in, in my college peers, you know, where parents were really directing them that way too. But there's some that, that I've worked with that the parents weren't so stringent, but still I hear, well, my mom really doesn't want me to major in that. Or, or I'm afraid to tell my parents I want to be an English major. They're thinking I need to be, you know, whatever. So, um, but they soon find out after that first semester, that first year, whether or not their pick was the pick for them. I have a funny story where I was, um, th- I had a young man and he was intent on going into political science. That's what he wanted to do. Very bright, graduated near the top of his very large graduating class, gets in first semester, barely scrapes by with a D in poli sci 101. So we said, hey, you know, when you major in something, you have to take 20 or 30 something hours to get that as a major. So if the very first introductory class, you're kind of skating by, let's just kind of extrapolate that out into the future. And you don't even have to say it to that extent. They're like, this might not be a good choice. I get a lot of biology majors. Everybody wants to be a doctor and they flunk freshman biology. I think mm, maybe we need to rethink this and that's okay. It's not a judgment kind of thing, but, but um, the assessment definitely helps at least to get them. I said, you just start with something, right? Start. It's okay to change your major. People change their major all, all the time. So, so thank you for sharing that story with the girl in theater. I love that. Um, because that, that is something that's different to do, not the traditional path right? If people want to go into the arts, some kind of arts. And there's other ways. Do you, do you actually help people that want to go into uh, either like technical college or also something like the Art Institute? Do you do you actually, is that in your wheelhouse or is that something else? Different? Yeah, so um, a couple of like add-on packages that Class 101 has are for people who are going to fine arts who need, the, you know, the portfolios and might go into those specialized and then um, also the, the athletes. So I'm doing, um, you know, kind of having a separate college list, one for academics, right? And then one um, that might be if they play sports and helping them with marketing themselves. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so sometimes when we do have a student that meets, we do find through all the assessments and in the planning that, you know, perhaps a four-year university isn't the right fit for them. Maybe it's a two-year to a four-year. Maybe it is a technical college. Um, right. So traditionally, we work with students who their goal is to go to a four-year institution. Right. Um, but yes, every now and then, if it's, if it's not that's not what's right for the, the student, then yes, we, we help them again with the researching of what is the right fit for them. That's great. I'm glad you mentioned the athletes because I know that I've been approached before to, um, to even life coach an athlete. And it was, it's, a, it's a really different niche to, to work with an athlete because there's, well, one, there's a lot of competition there's so many variables coming in with scouting and I think timing is crucial and they have all kinds of additional resources generally, or they need to get those, like you said, a pitching coach or a batting coach or whatever, you know I mean? So there's, so I'm glad to know that you actually do work with athletes because I found just in my own, I'm like, wow, that's, you know, that's kind of out of, out of my zone of genius is the, the whole athletic Thing. I mean, I can get them to be, to make good grades and to, to be confident, things like that in high school. But in terms of all the college stuff, that's, that's great that, that you do that. So, so how do you do this? Do you do it online, in person? How does it technically work? Yeah, so um, we, we can meet students on Zoom, um, you know, or Google Hangouts, you know, online. Um, if they live near a Class 101 location, a lot of students do choose to go in person to our our you know, I have a storefront, if you will, here um, in my area. So a lot of my students who are here in the greater Houston, I'm in the Cypress area, come in person. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so if if in person is for you, we can see if a class 101 is nearby. Um, If not, we have them all over the country and can meet online as well. So thank you. So I'm going to put again, I'm going to put the links how to contact you. And they can contact you. And if they're wanting to do if they wanted to work with you, they could do it virtually no matter where they live. Uh, if they live in Houston, they could do it in person if they want to. And also, if they want to find another uh, Class 101 in their area, you'll be able to refer them 
Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I'd be happy to connect them with someone in their area. So I know you've talked a lot about how you do and what you do, but could you pinpoint that one thing that really makes what you do unique in this, in this realm of college preparation for a teenager? Yeah. So what I love about class 101 and what was drawn to me was this holistic approach to college planning. Yeah. Um, I, again, parent of a teenager. So I do see, you know, there's some that just do test prep and there's some that just do essay help. Um, and then there's some that, you know, help curate a list or maybe focus more on the, for the parents, the financial planning, um, aspect of it. But I just really liked this. This was very student focused, very mm -hmm. holistic. Mm -hmm. So it's, not every kid is trying to get a perfect score on the ACT based on their goals. Um, not every, you know, kid is, you know, looking at 20 schools. Some look at, you know, smaller amount. And cause I just really liked that part of it. It's right. We're right. covering all the bases. So every spring I sit down with my students and we talk about their, again, their counselor helps them, but we can talk about what classes they're going to pick next year Yes. and why. And so I'm like, Hey, you want to go engineering. So for you, let's do this, this, and this one we're exploring, right? Like we're exploring now if that works for you. Right. Um, and then two, if you know, we're happen, happen to also be making your transcript look better or making your resume look better. So it's what's specific for them and it's all the aspects. Um, so even when we work on their essays, right? So I can say, Oh, we're working on your essay, but I know, cause I've been working with you. I know what's also on your resume and I also know what they're going to see on your transcript. So now I know we need to talk about something different over here. Um, and because I'm not just working on one essay, I'm working on, I know that the college is going to get these other supplemental essays. So I see it all as a package, just like the college would see this student. Um, so that's my favorite part. Uh, I, love that. I love the whole list of things because that's what I do. Cause I'm, I'm an additional life coach. I'm also a health coach. And I tell them you cannot separate your health, you know, your, your mind from your body. And so we learn, I work on all aspects of that in, in my, in my coaching. So I, that what you do totally resonates with, with me and my philosophy on really how to move, move a young person forward to success and confidence and happiness, which is what the parents want. That's why they're here today. Right. right. So, um, so you have, you have something special for the parents who are joining us today. You have a little freebie, which is really cool. And can you tell them a little bit about that? Yes. Um, so we have a free um, ebook that you can download. Um, and within that, it's going to have all of our contact information, um, as well as at Class 101, we do a free consultation. Um, so within that, you'll have a link that you can, you know, schedule a phone call um, or a Zoom. And so we can talk about your student's specific needs. Um, I do personally um, tell each, you know, student that I meet with that I'm like, the information's out there. Like, I don't ever want them to think they have to hire someone like me. They can do it on their own. Mm -hmm. um, so I do like to have those conversations where I'm like, hey, if it were me, I'd do X, Y, and Z, write this down, get the timeline. But if they think they would just benefit from that accountability partner and that cheerleader, um, then some choose, you know, to go ahead and hire. Um, but yeah, so we have that um, for, for anyone who, who's interested in getting that ebook that has some information about college planning. Oh, that's great. That's great. And I'll have the, I'll have the links for all of that too as well. So, so I always tell people information is great and I'm an information junkie learning, but it's just words on paper. So we want to get them to act. We want parents are here because they want to take action. They want to move forward. They want to move the needle, so to speak. So what is something that you would want parents who are watching today to do in the next 24 or 48 hours to, to move forward in what we're talking about today? Um, absolutely. I would say um, one, the first thing they could do is, you know, call someone at class 101, right. And just, just to have that conversation, right. Right. um, you could do that. Um, but depending on the age group, right? If, if it's a freshman or a sophomore, um, maybe sit down with that student. And one thing that we love is if say, hey, what's that dream school? What's that school? And they might just name a school. Maybe it's the big state school. But actually, you can Google this information and find out what are the stats for a student that gets in there. And so I think as a freshman, if they see what kind of, you know, GPA or test scores um, are important to that school, then it allows them, you know, Oh, okay. Like I need to, I need to get it, get it into gear and they to get that goal, right. To right. know what they're shooting for. Otherwise they're just pulling at everything that they're told to do. Oh, I got to take every hard class. And, um, so then kind of finding that out if they're a little bit older, um, as a junior, if you have a junior in 
in high school, um, I would have them figure out um, this year, um, kind of form that college list. So, so get a couple schools um, on the radar and again, setting those goals. And I know test, testing is very odd right now um, with the SAT and ACT, but figure out which test they like so that they can take that this year in their junior year. Um, and then again, just as they research those schools, find out if they're test optional. Um, okay. So again, so yeah, I, I think if the students can see what the average student looks like that gets into a school that they're looking at, um, that can help them set some goals. And, and just, um, I just kind of want to go backtrack just a little bit based on what you said is that with the testing, let's say they're in a situation where it's not optional. I, I know and have been told also by different people in academia that so there are certain kids that just flat out do better on the ACT than the SAT or vice versa. You know, so, so both are not created equal. And it's my understanding that the ACT is a little more, it's a little more science-based. Is that correct? A little more. Yeah. yeah. And so, so do you suggest that parents, they, their teens take both? I know it has to do with the college too, but just generally it's, you know, it's the junior year, let's just say that everything hopefully gets back to normal you know they're looking at in the spring probably in the spring you know they're they may take it in march some in march maybe may and again in the summer and then they start their applications for the senior year I, that's generally kind of what i what i look at but um what would you tell them in terms of this testing thing because that see that is a huge source of anxiety i noticed for a lot of my teens i work with that test and the score which which test because because the deadlines are pretty far out of the tests or you pay a penalty, it costs more and you, you know, you register online, but what would you tell them between the two or both or how to look at that? Um, so what we do is we have our students take practice tests and you can find those online for free oh. um, through college board is the SAT and then, or ACT.org for the ACT. We have our students take a diagnostic test and it's a previous test that is, is now out for them to take. Um, and that way they can figure out which test they're better at. Um, because the schools, it's a little bit different than it used to be. The schools don't care. They don't have a preference for the SAT yeah, or ACT. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. figure out, yes, which test are you better at? Um, if your student has taken the PSAT at school, um, then I just make my student take the ACT for practice. And then again, you can Google, we look at the score. Okay, okay. I didn't realize that. So if they took the PSAT, then you have them take the ACT. Yeah, and then I can, based on their P, and you can go into your student's College Board account. So based on their PSAT scores, it kind of gives you an idea of what they would get on the SAT. Because the PSAT is out of 1520, um, but they'll still give you an idea of what you're going to possibly make on the SAT. So then I say, hey, take this practice ACT. And then I tell them, hey, I know you don't want to take this three-hour test, but I promise this is to yeah. save you time because yeah. we're going to figure out, we're not going to prep for both. We're going to figure out which one because um, then you can compare the scores. And if they just do better on one, um, then we do that one. That's what if, you go with. Yeah. yeah. If they do about the same, then guess what? I, I tell them, I'm like, hey, the ball's in your court. Look at this. You get to make a choice. Which one do you prefer? The ACT goes a little bit faster, faster paced. Uh, the ACT does have that science section. Believe it or not, you don't actually have to know a lot about science on it. Um, you just have to be okay with reading science, right? Right. Um, and so we then let them pick which one, and then we just prep for one. Okay. Um, so that, that takes some anxiety, because again, these kids are like, well, I'm taking the ACT this month and the SAT next month. I'm like, let's just figure out which one's better. So then we can get it down to one and we can get good at that one. Um, and we're not bopping around here and trying to memorize different timing sections on different tests. We, we have one um, that we're oh, focused good. on. So okay. that's, a good, that's something that juniors can, can do. Okay. Okay. That's great. So I, I, I thought of one more question is, um, do you help with someone who's already in college that's wanting to pursue a master's degree? Why? So that, in um, or the GRE or anything like that. Do y'all help with that? Right. And that's actually not something that's in the scope okay. of what, what we do. Yeah. We focus on those high schoolers. Um, Got it. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because there may be some parents who have, who have older kids that right. are thinking about that too right. as well. So, all right, so parents, thank you so much for joining us today. And there is, you know, I'll have the link to reach Kathy 
uh, that you can contact her directly and also to get your freebie, your ebook that sounds amazing. Thank you so much for being here. I know this has given parents some clarity and some action steps that they can take and answered questions. And they can also ask you questions within the Facebook group too, if they have some more. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hi, I hope that was helpful for you as it was for me. We have a great selection of experts who are going to be teaching you more and more about how to parent successful teenagers. So be sure and not miss any of those videos. You can go to our private Facebook page and you can engage with some of the speakers, also ask questions, and join a community of parents. So I hope that this has been very valuable to you and I'll see you in the next video.